Hello and welcome to a video on changing the diaphragm in this air pump. So these are one of my favourite air pumps, the AirTech version from Evolution Aqua. They've always been really good to me. The sort of the standard that I'd always go for, they're just brilliant. Um, this one needs a new diaphragm obviously. I haven't ever changed any of my, uh, on my pond, I don't want to say that out loud but there we go. Um, I haven't done. This one, I suspect it needs changing because it's been a little bit neglected. Uh, when I took the lid off here, the filter in it was very mucky. Um, and the, I think, I think it would probably been, you know, the air had been turned off so it weren't actually out, you know, allowed to output any air at some point, you know what I mean? So it was still running but the valve were closed on it so it were limited and it just killed the diaphragm in it. So, it's got in a new one today and that's what's in this box. This is the new diaphragm kit for it. But first of all, let's actually turn it on. Let's have a look. So, we can see it's a little bit noisy. And uh, it does actually blow out some air. So, I don't know whether you probably can hear that. But the, uh, it, it is actually blowing out there. And, uh, but there's just no pressure there at all. You start, you just cover it and it doesn't really don't even attempt to fight you really. Um, so with some air pumps that I've come across before, I've never actually changed the diaphragm in this one, so it's new to me. Um, sometimes you can get a little rubber bung that's in it and if you close the air valve, close the air off so it's blocked, sometimes it can blow out that bung. Um, or there's be a rubber pipe inside and sometimes that can blow off and something like that, but I don't think that's what's happened with this. I haven't actually looked at it that closely to be honest. But let's get on. So we'll start by taking these four screws out, one in each corner. And then, now we've done that, sometimes it can be quite difficult to get this bit off because they can be a bit sealed. Um but I'm hoping I can do it. Grab hold in it somewhere. Probably not the recommended way to do it, but the way I'm doing it. There we go, just loosen it like so. And that comes off. So these are quite a substantial cover, these things. Really, uh, really quite heavy, well made. Quite like that, but if you plug it in now, they're ridiculously noisy without the cover on. So yeah, it's quite noisy. <laughs> um, so here we go. Here's the diaphragm bit. We're changing. So we'll start by taking these off. I think. Let's drain it. One. That's that. That's a might plug it in just to see which one. See if there's one better than the other. Yeah. That was a mistake. <laughs> right, so let's take one of these off and have a look, see what we've got. See, a lot of muck inside here look, so it were you know, quite mucky really. Let's have a look, see what the new ones look like, see what we've got. Let's see a new one. Yeah. Yeah, that needs to come off as well, so I need to, uh, need to get that off of there. that off, so uh, yeah. it's all, I don't think that's actually supposed to come off like that. Hold on. 
I think that's where it's trouble where they are that it were uh, completely gone. Let's get this thing off. Like so. Let's get a quick clean round. Right, let's put this one back on, the new one. Just make sure I'm doing it right way around. That one done. Okay, flip it around. Get these old bits out of there. Okay. They're very lucky inside, you can probably see why it's really had a problem. Quite lucky, but there you go. So this is a 130. I think it's exactly the same as the 150. Um, the 70 and the 95 I think are slightly different. I'm not 100% sure what the difference is, I just know that for some reason these the diaphragm kits for the 130 and the 150 are more expensive um, yeah, than the other ones, but like I said, I've, this is the first one of these I've ever done. This one seems to be intact actually. Maybe up the other side that bled it down. Yeah, it seems to be alright, that one of mine. Try not to absolutely destroy it, I think. You don't mean there isn't any like micro cracks with it, and you don't get the kit individually anyway, so it's not really worth keeping. But I might just keep that one. But still, not having a new one on it. There we go, let's give it a try. Test it. Obviously it's going to be quite noisy again, but we'll just see if it gives our pressure. Like a new one. In fact, we're substantially less noisy as well, actually, so most of the noise will be cost of that, so we've got pipes on perfect. Put the lid on. So I wanted to make this video just to show how really easy it is to change these air pumps, uh, diaphragms. It seems like a bit of a daunting task because they are very expensive air pumps to be fair. Um, but, you know, the actual process of it, what is this? 12 screws and two nuts to take off and then two of them little clip pipe clips. So. It's fairly straightforward procedure, and uh, in in some cases, we uh, some other pumps, it might not even be a new diaphragm it needs. You might just need to take the lid off and check whether it uh, kicked out any of its safety bungs or out like that, and just make sure that it's because uh, I have I had that with one of my pumps. It were uh, I must have closed the valve on it and then it just stopped working. And somebody actually told me that it might just want the bung putting back in. So I had a look and it were right. Popped it back in and it's worked ever since. Well, let's try it. Perfect. Let's see. <laughs> there we go. Got it. Yeah. Well, sweet. Like a brand new one, plenty of pressure in that. So this is going to be uh, going to work on my Nexus and my bottom drain for my quarantine tank. And uh, have this one pump instead of two others. So, uh, yeah, please with that. So here we are with the uh, air pump. 
and it has been powering this Nexus here for a few days and it is also doing this bottom drain here so the outlet of the air pump comes out in it around the back of the Nexus to this little manifold just here and that splits it to the Nexus and that one there goes down there to the bottom drain so I've turned the bottom drain quite low so it's not like bubbling away like crazy it didn't seem to affect it when I did have it bubbling away really fast but you just couldn't see the fish and uh, so yeah it's, it's doing a really good job so I could have the drain either a bit deeper or running a bit faster and it just didn't seem to make any difference but uh, yeah running really well doing a good job so there were two air pumps running this if you saw the setup of it so the one that were doing the nexus and one that were doing the uh, uh, air stone in there both of them combined didn't do as good a job as this one's doing on its own so the the uh, k1's definitely a lot more mixed up with this pump than it were previously um, which is great but that that one also isn't quite as fast as it were it were a lot faster with the other air pump when it were on its own, but I didn't want it that fast, it's just unnecessary. Um, so there we go, a look at that. So if you like this video, then please like it. If you want to see more videos like this and fishery related videos, then please feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, then please put them down below. And I shall see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.